let's get this Tomasa review underway. Um, there's a few changes from the Narsh review uh, that you'll notice. But first of all, let me uh, let me just say, as usual, the Narsh review was rated in order of character appearance, and the Tomasa review is always lined up in order of their rankings. So here's a quick view of who the best characters are, who the worst characters are. And uh, we will go ahead and start breaking them down right now, as usual. It's on a scale of 1 to 10. 1 being absolutely useless, and 10 being totally essential to our team. So let's go ahead and start on the top end of things. Okay, General Leo. This time, uh, very different from his last two iterations, because he is currently our best character. Um, he's got Blitz and Tools, which obviously, uh, Vanilla Commands, very powerful. A lot of utility tools obviously uh, really only juggle between auto crossbow and chainsaw but uh his stats are pretty good um pretty sure that blitz draws from magic power so his magic power stat being 48 is pretty dang helpful um he's pretty much made uh the, our next best character even better because of the those skills um but yeah he's never a bad choice to bring along He's always going to have the most damage output of all of our characters, for the most part, uh, without the, uh, you know, the, the without the random variables. His his skills are just good, right? So uh, General Leo getting a bump up from his first his first two iterations in our previous seeds and his review in Narsh. He is now at a nine, and is currently our best character that we have found, and he will definitely be sticking around on the team for a while. Because Blitz is only going to get better, and Tools is pretty much always going to be good. It might get a little obsolete in the World of Ruin, but we'll see. Okay, moving on to Good Terra. So, obviously, she was supposed to be Rosa, but for the purposes of our storyline and her color palette, she is Good Terra returning to fight Granny before she can turn into the new Evil Terra. So, as always with Mimic, it bumps you up pretty good, because... Just having Mimic is going to make you a better character, because the, the next best character you have on your team, you can just Mimic whatever they're doing, and you become just as good as them. In this case, when Terra mimics, uh, say, uh, General Leo, right? When, he mimic, when she mimics him, she kind of becomes better than him for a moment, uh, because her stats are, are just, I mean, not so much better than his, but her magic power is 49, and his is 48, her Vigor is 36, and his is 25, whether or not that draws from anything. Um, so she's got a little bit of a downfall, which is why she's not tied with Leo, because she can't equip weapons. There are no weapons she can equip, um, which is a shame because she has jump and she has the ability to super jump right now, but that is kind of, kind of useless, so her fight and jump commands are kind of useless. Uh, Really, all she's doing is mimicking, but that's all she really has to do, because she's that good. Um, so, currently, Good Terra, the hero of our subplot here, is sitting at an 8. Uh, I think that's plenty good for her. I mean, obviously General Leo is better, but she can mimic General Leo, like I said, and be just as good, if not better. So, uh... The fact that she has to have another good character on her team to uh, really make use of Mimic kind of dropped her too, but uh, I'm pretty sure 8 is a, is a good place for her. Alright, moving on. Ghost. Alright, so I love Ghost. He's awesome. I love the sprite. I love the hex for skill, even if we don't use it that much. Uh, but most of all, I love that he got Locke's equip scheme, because that's what's made him uh, up here with these characters. So... Number one, uh, he doesn't have any magic, really, that he's using, but he has been throwing our rare which is perfect for him. Uh, he's got 30 magic power, which isn't the best, but uh, our rare is just pretty good, and he's getting some great rolls with it. Um, outside of our rare this is what makes him pretty good, is, again, he's got Locke's equipment scheme, so he's equipping the Valiant Knife. Even at full HP, the Valiant Knife is doing pretty good damage, but once we double muscle belt him, and he gets low on HP, he's he's wrecking crap. Like, really wrecking crap. So, he's pretty cool, man. I like him. Uh, he can also equip the Atma weapon, which, uh, not as good as the Valiant Knife, obviously. 
but it's still an option. And uh, so eventually, you know, if we ever find a Genji glove, which we still haven't run across, he can do the the lock uh, strategy of having the Atma weapon and the Valiant knife equipped, uh, which would be really cool. As of right now, he's uh, sitting at an 8 tied with good Terra. Uh, I think he's very useful to have at any point. Uh, Valiant Knife is good physical damage. It just is. And if we're not doing good physical damage, he can just throw our rare and be totally fine. So, yep, Ghost is awesome, and he's at an 8. All right, one of our newer characters. So, uh, Kane. Kane has a lot of uh, really crazy stuff going on here. So... Number one, he's got a level four flare, and uh, I forget what the ice skill was, actually, but... Oh, yeah, it's Ice Rabbit, so it's a healing option that doesn't cost MP. So, Kane has level four flare and Ice Rabbit, which, which the targeting is correct. So, you will level four flare the enemy, attempting attempt to level four flare the enemy, and then you'll always Ice Rabbit your team. So, healing option. Then, he's got Lore. Currently, we got a bunch of lures, and I'll tell you how. Um, so, we had an item, I forget what it was, that when you equip it, changes lure into dance. Now, all of our dances are randomized. And we went around, we tried a bunch of them, and a lot of them threw out lore skills. Uh, one of which being Pearl Wind. Actually, I don't think that we got Pearl Wind from that. I think we got it from an enemy, now that I recall. But regardless, uh, we got that, we got... A uh, couple of things from there. Blowfish is in there. Um, so now he's got lore with an economizer on. He will have an economizer on. Now the problem with the economizer in this Mass Effect flag is that it rolled turning the fight command into Revenge Slimer, which is terrible. But he's not really going to be physically attacking for any reason. So it's just fine to replace fight with Rever uh, Revenge Slimer. Um... So Ice Rabbit's a healing option, in Lure, uh, Pearl Wind is a healing option, and he's doing it all for one MP, right? And then, you also have the fact that I can just put the, uh, the item on the turn Lure into Dance, and one of his dances has the most broken thing in the game, and in my opinion, the most broken skill in the game, which you got to use from, uh... I believe it was Nightshade in the vanilla game. I don't know if it was actually this move or a different move that charmed people, but uh, one of his dances has Love Token, which is Goddess's move that makes whoever it hits jump in front of physical attacks and take damage for her. Uh, that is a skill that is in his dances. Uh, granted, it's very random. You might not get it, but it's, uh, it's worth it to try sometimes because that status even works on Final Kefka. Uh, it works on everything. Charm cannot be blocked. So, that's neat. Um, all that being said, Kane is currently sitting at a 7. I think that's fair for him. Uh, and he's got decent output, decent damage output, too, with Lore. So, he's not just healing. He's throwing damage out, too, with things like Blowfish. So, yeah, Kane, our Red Dragoon is sitting at a 7. Alright, let's move on to one of our other newest characters. We have Pug. Okay, so number one, he's a Pug. <laughs> Which is pretty cool. <clears throat> number two, his stats are not great. Um, it's probably surprising that he's up this high on the list, considering how bad his magic power stat is, and his other stats are not great either. Um, but, number one, he's got our rare as a command, so we don't need to take up an equipment slot giving him the light robe for him to use it, right? Uh, and then his unique skill is uh, Bolt Miss, which is uh, Bolt Edge and Missile. Okay, Missile I'm not too excited about, but Bolt Edge is quick AoE. We don't have to buy Bolt Edges, so he can just throw it out. Now, the problem with that move, and I'm going to get into this now, is just like with Sid, um... It's one element. It just so happens to be the same element with uh, lightning. So if something he is healed by it, it's kind of just not good. Um, so while it's pretty good right now, it might not be in the future. Um, and then moving on to his X magic stat. Now, 
having an X magic stat bumps you up pretty dang high. Um, so here's the reason why Pug is lower than Kane. Even though he can equip Espers that give him Life 3 and Cure 3. He's a great healer just to throw spells down with. Uh, and the fact that he has X magic means he can throw two spells now. Now, um, he is lower because he has no damage output pretty much whatsoever. And he can equip the Economizer just like Kane, which would turn his fight command into um, Rev Slim also, which would be just fine for him because we're not going to be physically attacking. But he's only got pretty much healing. Um, and his magic power stat isn't great. So he needs to throw two Cure 3s for one MP apiece to heal pretty good, I would think. Uh, life 3 is going to be really helpful for getting through the Fanatics Tower, but you don't really need Life 3 that early. So, uh, despite the fact that he's pretty good at healing, he's also very squishy. He kind of takes a lot of damage. You know, it, it's it's kind of up in the air for Pug right now. We just got him, so I don't have a lot of, of uh, evidence to support the rating I've given him. But, uh, simply because Kane has a couple of healing options and can do damage output, that is why Pug is lower on the list than he is. And Pug is sitting at a, I believe, a 6. Yes, he is at a 6. Um, I think that's fair. Again, we'll see if he gets any better. I do like the fact that he's thematic, which, uh, you know, he has bolt miss and that glitch in the randomizer when you have a throwable item as a command makes you step forward and never step backwards if you keep doing it. And he's a pug. He's stepping forward. It's pretty cool. Um, so either way, he's sitting at a six. That being said, let us move on to Caster. Caster kind of got a, uh, a level down here. Um, because pug exists, and has our rare as a command. And because Ghost will be using the Light Robe, even though we have two, we could put one on Caster as well. But having two to three instances of our rare is probably not good. Uh, technically four, because if we had good Terra, she'd just mimic it. Um, Caster got sort of leveled down because, yes, he has Throw, which is amazing. But here we have a Bolt Miss, a Bolt Edge, that we can use anytime we want. And we have a healer attached to it. He might be more useful later when we have stuff to throw that's just going to do massive damage, right? Um, but as of right now, he's actually... He's not less than Pug. He's just less of the two sixes, because he's also a six, right? Um, so yeah, he's he's sitting there. I do love his the fact that he's a black mage, and he came default named Caster. That's just hilarious to me. Um, but... He's, he's doing all right for now. He's not a bad character. He's just not quite up to par with the rest of them. All right, moving on to Yura, our newest character. Okay, so the thing about Yura is if you've watched the previous seeds, we have rolled the skill R Fire before on uh, Bunny. And it just throws out random fire attacks. The, the difference is, so... Really, Bunny didn't have our fire. Bunny had question mark fire, right? So it would do a random fire skill multiple times. In Yura's case, it only does one, and you could roll a bad one. Not to mention, fire is one element, once more. Uh, it can become useless pretty easily. Um, and then, where it really comes down to it with Yura is... He's got some awesome natural spells. So he came onto the party already knowing Bolt 3, Ice 3, Life 2, Pearl, and I believe Scan. So those are some hefty uh, late level spells right there. Bolt 3 and Ice 3, obviously good damage. Life 2, amazing. Pearl, just Pearl. And then, I mean, Scan is there. It could be helpful eventually. So... The thing about him is, he's only got a 29 magic power stat, which is not good, even with those late game spells. Obviously, sometimes the spell power is just enough to get you through. You don't need a huge magic power stat, but with a huge magic power stat, you're doing even more damage. So, uh, 
But the good thing is, lucky for Yura, is he has a an Esper he can equip. I forget which one, but it's giving him magic power plus one on level up. So, potentially, he could be fairly useful later with a few levels, right? But as of right now, uh, I had to put him right below the sixes with a five. Just because, obviously, again, our fire is one element, and he doesn't have a huge magic power stat to begin with. And the fact that he needs levels to be doing really good damage with his magic kind of kind of, kind of puts him to the wayside, right? Alright, moving on. We have Mylon. Okay, so here's the thing about Mylon. His magic power stat is ridiculous. Right? 46 is pretty good. Uh, he doesn't have any great magic he can use right now. He could not equip the Flame Shield, I don't believe, to learn Fire 2 even. Um, he could potentially be pretty good eventually. Uh, Sword Tech, I love it. It's so cool, but it is one of the, sadly, the worst skills in Final Fantasy VI, in my opinion, just because of the, the wait time. So, <laughs> the best thing you can possibly do <clears throat> is... You do everyone else's turns first, and then go to his, so you're throwing out damage and not wasting time while you're sitting in the sword tech menu, right? And four is probably the minimum number you want to charge up to with it. Uh, I mean, dispatch is good for taking out low-level enemies and stuff. Uh, retort, you rarely, rarely want to use retort. Just because you have four targets on your team, it's probably not going... No one's probably going to try and hit him when you use it. Um, it's a one in four chance of wasting a turn, right? And then uh, Slash, obviously, kind of a uh, demi, you know, sort of move. I think it halves an HP if it hits. Quadra Slam is, like, the only thing you want to... The lowest thing you want to charge up to. Now, with the, the skills coming later, obviously you're going to have more wait time while you're charging it. But things like Stunner, uh, Cleave, even Quadra Slice, which is better than Quadra Slam, stuff like that, gonna be pretty good. Um, Empower, eh. But uh, it's really cool. I love that we have Mylon because he's really neat. Um, but he's not looking so great right now, but we haven't really used him that much uh, since before Narsh. So it's yet to be seen. As of right now, he is sitting at a 4. Uh, which I think is fair also. Alright. Moving on to our whiny teen Sephiroth, our main character, who's trying to find himself. Um, so, Sephiroth didn't get much of a boost. He did get a boost, but he didn't get much of one. So, we're not even going to talk about his skills, because obviously Sketch Morph, whatever. Does not have a magic command. So... Uh, not really that helpful. Now, he does have MP, however. And this is why he got bumped up. We got an Illumina in the Burning House, and Sephiroth can equip it. Now, while his Vigor stat isn't crazy, it's the Illumina, right? And he can now use MP for critical hits with it. Since there's no nothing else he's using MP for, that's actually pretty good. Um, so... Being able to equip the best sword in the game, throw down pretty good damage, uh, not bad. And if he happens to proc Pearl, he does have a magic power stat of 40, so he's doing dang good damage still. Um, but I can't help but think there's somebody who would probably benefit far more from equipping the Illumina. The problem is, Sephiroth kind of has to have it, because he has nothing else going for him. So, as of right now, Sephiroth is at a 4, tied with Mylon. Uh, because they're both, they both have similar usefulness, right? Uh, Sephiroth is probably on the higher end, really, like it should be like this, just because he's got the Illumina and can crit with it. Uh, but regardless, uh, I think a 4 is okay for him now. He didn't get much of a bump, but he did get one, so, uh, let's thank the Randomizer for that. Thank you, Randomizer. Alright, moving on. These are our last two characters. So, Shin. I've not used him at all since we first got him. So I really don't have any new information for you. I uh, haven't checked what kind of espers he can equip either. So, uh, nothing doing there. But, again, fight capture magic item. Uh, middling stats. Just kind of a, a lukewarm character in general. Uh, it is cool that his palette and his and turban and everything kind of make him look like Shin from Sakoden 2, 
uh, which is perfect because we didn't want to just have a lock clone or a merchant. We've had we've had both of those before. So uh, yeah, he's pretty cool. Uh, no telling how good he's really gonna be until the World of Ruin, which is the case for a lot of these characters. But um, as of right now, I would say he's at a two. And then we have Locke. Just Locke. Incredibly just Locke, because he rolled steel and magic. <laughs> Fight steel magic item. His vanilla list on his vanilla sprite in Mog's spot, right? He's got incredible speed. It's pretty great. Everything else is kind of uh, lackluster, but he's just Locke. There's no telling what kind of espers he can equip, because I haven't checked, but yeah. There you have it. It's just a vanilla character that we got. So, uh, he is also at a 2, along with the other Lock clone. And I don't know how good he's going to be. Steel could be great, considering this flag. But, uh, as good as Steel is, not really as good as Capture, right? So, all that being said, those are the, uh, character ratings for the Tomasa review. Let's talk about the Seed a little bit. Uh, it's still really fun to play. Uh, obviously with the Mass Effect and Random Boost, it's we're, we're just getting neat stuff. The fact that we got an Illumina before the World of Ruin is a big deal. Um, and Paladin Shields and everything else. Um, it's not incredibly challenging as of yet. Uh, I have no idea what's in store, because it's a randomizer, obviously. It, we could run into some roadblocks, you know, the floating continent awaits and the world of ruin lies beyond it there's always a chance for the seed to blow up in my face but as of right now it's pretty easy um and i really do again love the fact that we're getting late game stuff and it's got detrimental effects on it that makes me think about whether or not it's worth equipping but uh right now like i said we're pretty well equipped here to to take on anything that, that the floating continent or the world of ruin wants to throw at us. Either way, that is the end of the Tomasa review, and uh, next episode we'll be heading to the Floating Continent, moving on to the World of Ruin. Uh, until then, I will see you guys next time. Peace.